Hi there, my name is Zach Hater, and in this video I'm going to be presenting Channeled Future Timelines, a vision for a new Earth, and is being hosted by Zion Zeta's The Symposium. Within this video, I'm going to be covering a little bit about my own personal story. Uh, I'm going to be telling a quite an important note about discerning this information. I'll be saying where these predictions come from. I'll be explaining a little bit about the dimensions and densities so you can get a better understanding of this information. And uh, is this the most important time in the history of the universe? Why is this all happening now? And what is causing the shift? So then I'll be going into timelines starting from 1950 AD all the way through to 3600 AD. Then I'll be just talking about references at the end. So here we go. So my own personal story. In 2018, I'm currently 27 years old, but my story didn't really start looking into all of this kind of information right the way back until I was about 15 years old when I watched the movie Zeitgeist. That film planted some seeds in my awareness. The feeling that perhaps there may be something more beyond our collective perception of reality than what we're conditioned to believe is true. So then four years go by and it's 2010. I'm 19 years old. A friend of mine at university started talking about the idea of 9-11 being an inside job. This then began my five year kind of journey of going so far down my own personal rabbit hole by experiencing exposing myself to all kinds of different information, alternative news, video documentaries, books. This was information from the likes of Alex Jones, David Icke, Prepare for Change, and various other alternative news outlets and public figures. I found lots of correlating information from, from various sources regarding very heavy conspiracy theories about how humanity has been enslaved upon this planet by a dark presence from another universe for millennia, and that they wanted to reduce the population of the world down to 500 million. I had to go through the self-created rabbit hole of sheer darkness between 2013 and 2014, feeling that myself and humanity were going to get wiped out somehow. This time for me, I could liken to the idea of the dark night of the soul. I was the metaphorical snake shedding its skin of fear, in this case. Because then my perspective started to change again in late 2014, right into 2015. I stumbled across information from the likes of Delors Cannon, Barbara Handclaw, Barbara Masiniak, and Brad Johnson, who were speaking about the potentials the world was heading towards. At first I was very sceptical of a lot of this spiritual-based information I was looking into, as I was very caught up in the idea of disinformation at the time being everywhere, because it was or at least I perceived that it was. So I didn't know who or what to trust. But I just kept my mind open and kept exposing myself to new ideas and new information. And then the dots slowly started to connect with everything I had been looking into up until that point. So over time, I went from being in a very low vibration of fear in 2013 to 2014 to now in 2018 where I couldn't be happier about the directions that both myself and the collective are heading in. My hope for this work I have collected together here is that it may inspire someone else who is going through the process of shedding their skin of their old fear-based beliefs and to perhaps help catalyze their own personal awakening, awakening a little bit further and step into more of their self-empowerment. The following information is what I is what has personally helped ease my own fears and anxieties about the potentials of my own future and the future of the human collective on Earth. I hope that wrapping it all up into this neat little package and putting some of my own essence into it where appropriate to help connect the dots may help someone else who's currently going through something similar to what I once did. So now we move on to an important note on discernment. When we look at the idea of channeled future timelines and predictions, it is important to understand that the future is never set in stone because it doesn't exist. While our 
higher selves know everything that is going to happen to us from birth until death. There are still infinite amounts of timelines that really bond themselves together based on the momentum of energy on a collective co-creational level and an individualized creational level. Just becoming aware of a potential future timeline can cause it to change, and as such, all collective and individual timeline predictions mentioned here are subject to change and fluctuate. What I am about to report represents a variety of different frequencies or parallel universes. This means that you may not actually experience those futures if you are on a different frequency. Some of the following timeline information was received via progression hypnotherapy sessions between the 1970s and 1990s, when there were still some significantly less than desirable collective timelines that still had some momentum. For example, some of these timelines included World War III timelines, of which thankfully in 2015 were completely averted and nullified. So this is an important factor to bear in mind when discerning these timelines for yourself, as some of the timelines shared here may now in 2018 be in one way past their sell-by date, as it were, of which I have marked them as such. The information relayed through the quantum healing hypnotherapy QHHT sessions are the words coming from the individual being hypnotized. So the perspectives and dates they are sharing are very personal to them and their own path. So it can be helpful to consider that you might experience something different yourself than to what they are saying about. When the word will is used to describe the way something will be, this will imply that there is a strong momentum towards that something coming about, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will happen on your own in personal timeline, or that it will happen at all. So basically what I'm saying here is, the future is not set in stone, and the future is different for everybody. Whether you want to see the information shared here as truth for you or not, is entirely up to you. You can take it or leave it, for really only you know within your own heart as to whether this information is right for you personally. So now onto the next section, where do these predictions come from? Here are four examples of how this future timeline information has been sourced. Quantum momentum calculations sourced via channeled benevolent higher dimensional beings, entities and collectives, many of whom exist in our future in this now moment. The second, past life regression and future life progression hypnotherapy session data conducted within the past 50 years. Third, psychic mediumship via clear intuitive abilities. Fourth, and not so much of this one, astral projection and remote viewing. So the information shared here, I've combined from different aspects and elements of the above mentioned four sources. Please note that the feelings come, that have come from higher dimensional, non-physical beings via a seasoned and thoroughly connected to their cosmic source channeling conduit, these feelings are likely to be conveyed into words with the least amount of ego distortion. However, in progression hypnotherapy, the, the client can be, in some cases, more subject to letting their own mind filters get in the way of the feelings they are attempting to interpret into words. So this is just something to be mindful of. So on to the next section now, what are the dimensions and densities? In order to understand the idea of ascension, I feel it helped me personally to understand the ideas of the dimensions and densities. Here I will briefly explain what the dimensions are and how they work in a very summarized way. However, the teachings about the densities will not be directly covered here. So the first dimension, we have the central iron crystal core of Earth. It's Earth's electromagnetic grid. It is gravity. It is the densest dimension. It is the first dimension. It is the center of the planet. From our perspective on Earth. The second dimension is the telluric realm, chemical, radioactive, mineral, crystalline essences. So everything, 
all of the crystal elements from diamonds to gold to dust between the core and the crust is the second dimension. It also includes the ley lines across the planet as well. So the third dimension is the physical body, the surface of the planet. So everything that's on the planet, of the, of the surface of the planet. The third dimension is linear space and time on Earth. It is also the lower self. So us incarnate in the body with our ego mind is the lower self. The fourth dimension is the astral body realm. It is the dimension of emotion. It is imaginative, it's intuitive, it get, there's creative impulses. The astral body realm is just outside of the 3D visible light spectrum. So it's just outside of what we can see with our own eyes. The fifth dimension, this is the dimension of love of pure intelligence. It is insight. It is the heart, the feelings of the heart. It is creativity, the center point of the body, the heart. It is the higher self. So in the third dimension, we have the lower self, the ego. In the fifth dimension, we have the higher self, which is the pure intelligence aspect of our being. The fifth dimension is also where the Akashic records are. So in the sixth dimension, this is the causal level, the soul level. It is where our soul resides. It is the last level of individuality before moving into collective consciousness. It is the morphogenic fields, the record bank of all 3D ideas geometrical matrices of 3D creations and desires that are held in form with sacred geometries. And next we have the seventh dimension. This is the oversoul level, group consciousness. This is where collective consciousness begins. The seventh dimension holds the orbits of stars and planets in place in the galaxy by means of seventh dimensional photon bands or galactic information highways of light. The eighth dimension, avatar level, a high level of mastery. The eighth dimension cherishes and guides the quality of existence of all beings in the dimensions below it. The eighth dimension is the cosmic order of the Galactic Federation who manage the galaxy. Now we have the ninth dimension. This is Christ level, unconditionally loving consciousness. The center of the Milky Way galaxy is the ninth dimension. It is the least dense. It's like a great jellyfish of light that enjoys receiving information from the suns that, indu that then induce within the jellyfish cosmic orgasms, <laughs> making eternal waves and pulsations in, throughout the Milky Way. And then we have the 10th dimension, which is cosmic level, so cosmic consciousness. That kind of goes beyond the idea of galaxies. There was also the ideas of up to 12, or even 13 dimensions, but those won't be covered here. So that's kind of... so. Those are, the, those are the dimensions explained in a very quick and summarized way. So now onto the next section. We have, is this the most important time in the history of the universe? As it has been said by Delors Cannon and many others, this is the first time in the history of the universe that an, that an entire planet like Earth, with all of her particular associated attributes, is changing its frequency and vibration to shift and ascend from the fourth dimension to the fifth dimension, from third density to fourth density, with all of the beings upon her surface that wish to, ascending with her at the same time. That is why it is said to be the greatest show in the universe, and everyone from many different galaxies and dimensions is watching to see what is going to happen. So why is this happening now? Well, Earth processes into Aquarius every 26,000 years, when each Mayan great cycle completes and then begins again. A new intention is created at the beginning of each approximately 26,000 year cycle. 
and four of these cycles, approximately 104,000 years, always entails a major evolutionary leap. There are 2,160 of these 104,000 year cycles within one 225 million year galactic orbit. And 2,160 is also the number of years in the precession of one zodiac sign on Earth. Twelve zodiac signs process in one exact 25,920 year precession known as the Mayan Great Cycle. According to both Aztec and Mayan cosmologies, December 21st, 2012 was the completion of a 104,000 year cycle composed of four 26,000 year Mayan Great Cycles. This coincides with the cycle of the four great ages of the Aztecs, who say Earth will be entering into the fifth world, 2012 is also the completion of a 225 million year galactic orbit. So that means we've just completed one entire lap around the Milky Way since the introduction of the reptilian species on Earth. And now a new evolutionary intention is being set for the next 225 million year orbit, which Earth will experience for the first time as a fifth dimensional slash fourth density planet. So what is causing the shift? On to the next section now. There are a number of aspects to it. So during the ages of Aquarius and Leo that spanned for two, 2,160 years each, our solar system enters the photon band, which emanates from the center of the Milky Way. Due to the higher vibrational frequency of the photonic light, it causes the objects within its path to become less vibrationally dense. Dimensions that can't hold the galactic tone while in the photon band will not be able to remain in form. There are also... So essentially the energetic upgrades from the photon band are coming through the central sun, Alcyone, from the galactic center. So that is all connected in one aspect. Another part of the reason why we are ascending is because of energetic upgrades and impulses that we are receiving from non-physical collectives across the galaxy, especially those that are genetically linked to us and consider us family. Also another reason for ascension is that it is the beginning of a new 225 million year galactic orbit. And also it is the first time in the history of the universe, of the whole universe, that an entire planet is ascending. So it is the most important time in the history of the universe. It's a bold statement, but there we go, it's perspective. So there we go, there's the introduction into all of this, really. Like, we are ascending. We're, we're all moving into this new reality of a fifth dimensional, fourth density Earth, which is going to be pretty beautiful. So here we go. Let's get dug in. So here starts the timelines. This is what we're all here for. <laughs> so the solar system started dipping into the photon band in the late 1950s. So the very outer reaches of our solar system were touching, the photon band was touching them, was touching it. Uh, this, this particular aspect was one that contributed to the start of the Love Revolution movement in the 1960s. So photonic light starts to enter the outer solar system. Things start to get a little bit lovey-dovey here on Earth. Potentially. That's an idea. Earth was in the photon band from March 16th to 23rd in 1987, just before the harmonic convergence then precisely half of the solar system was immersed when the photon band reached our sun at winter solstice, 1998. So there we go, that's kind of just from 1950s up until 2012 now. That is 
that's all that's really been covered here is the fact that the photon band is here. So now into the next section, 2012 to, two, to 2024 AD. So in 2012, Earth's entire orbital path was engulfed in this tidal wave of light at winter solstice 2012. Eventually, the whole solar system will be totally in the photon band. And during the next 2060 years, it will travel all the way through the photon band. 2012, Earth's new crystalline electromagnetic grid becomes fully activated. Throughout 2012 to 2015, many less than desirable timelines that included the idea of World War III were completely averted and nullified. So we don't have to be there. So World War III is not going to happen. It is not on the cards anymore at all. In 2016, Earth became a fourth density compliant planet, which meant that the planet on the whole is ready to sustain or to start moving into fourth density more fully. In 2018, tens of thousands of galactic confederation ships come into our solar system, which they are here now with us in 2018, to see which ascension timelines we will follow. This is the most ships that have ever been in the solar system at once during its entire history. Now on to the event, the solar event, the solar sneeze, the solar flash. So there will be the solar event, which will not just be one solar event, but a series of events that leads to one large event. The solar event would have happened in 2012. However, Sol, our sun, agreed to wait because the human collective was not karmically and vibrationally prepared at that time. The solar event could happen within one of the following windows, but as with all dates, these are based on the momentum of that moment when the information was brought through. And as such, the momentum can alter its course, so please use your own discernment. The first window, that seems to be, seems to have quite a lot of momentum going towards it, is this window now between 2018 and 2023 to 2024. Corey Goody shared in 2018 that this time window was from Yan Shah, the eggheads and the smart glass pads that he was in contact with at one point. I also heard t the year 2023 in 2018, where I was personally told by the Arcturian Council over a Skype channeling session with Daniel Scranton that it would be five years from then. So five years from 2018 makes it 2023. And then we have the idea of 2028. So Daniel Scranton stated in a live interview with Todd Medina in 2018 that he was of the understanding that it was going to be 10 years from now. So 10 years from 2018. And again, finally, the fourth perspective uh, that I feel is noteworthy, <coughs> the year 2118, so 100 years from now. A Adronus of Sirius, channeled by Brad Johnson, has shared and stated in 2018 that there was a 5% potential of momentum towards the event being postponed for another 100 years. So that to me says that the event's coming sooner rather than later. But again, all of these dates I've just said, take it with a pinch of salt. There's their dates. This solar event will knock out all AI influences and electrical technologies that can be affected by EMP across the entire planet. So that means all electronics, mobile phones, car circuit boards, all of it. This makes possible the landing of Galactic Confederation extraterrestrial ships, our cosmic cousins who share our genetics. The final sneeze from the sun will have a big impact on the consciousness of the people and the planet. How people will handle this blast of energy will, dire will depend directly on their mental and spiritual states prior to the blast. Those who have dealt with much of their karma and have been doing their inner shadow work to better their emotional and spiritual health will remain virtually unscathed. 
while those who don't will need quite a lot of assistance from others. Those who are at least 51% positive and who have lifted much of their karmic debris, density and weight will, in their own time after the event, lock into the fifth dimension slash fourth density, where they will then begin to experience both of the dimensions, while those still in 4D will not really be aware of those in 5D. But those in 5D will be aware of both dimensions. Many will continue to remain in higher 4D to serve others and for their own reasons. But over time, more and more people will look into 5D. So now I'm gonna take you through uh, the first quantum healing hypnotherapy session. This session, Alison Co. Um, did with her client, and I've called it an experience of the event. So the following is a really quite a wonderful example, example of a future life progression hypnotherapy session. So the client will be at home in the US Pacific Northwest near Portland. She'll be awake. She'll be looking out the window. She'll be watching it come at her from the south. It's all different colors and it looks like a wildfire, like colored smoke rolling in. It's all huge, miles high. It's going to lay her down and everybody's going to need to lay down. She's going to be vibrating. It'll be affecting everything physically. It will not just affect humans, but the whole planet. It looks iridescent, like coloured cellophane, like rainbow smoke. It's so overwhelming, people's natural instinct will be to stare. Some will tingle all over and vibrate. It will change people emotionally, physically, mentally, on all levels. She says she looks the same, not much older, and she doesn't have more grey hair. She said the sky is pretty, it's really pretty. People are stunned. It takes a while, and so nobody does much right away. Everyone is laying down. The energy is coming from the south. She sees people running in the streets, and they're really scared. It will come in the day for her, in the afternoon, in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. It changes everyone. She'll be moving on to 5D in the new earth. The solar flash is a precursor to moving into 5D. It's instant, she said. For her. The sky is lavender and an iridescent colour. She knows something is different. She knows she will stay on the earth, but it will be the earth in 5D. She's still laying down. It takes a while. The energy is going to be moving through people, and then it's going to stop them in their tracks. People come out of their houses just standing in the streets afterwards. It's the very, very beginning of the fifth dimension. It takes some processing time, but some senses will change right away. Some senses will take a bit longer. She's vibrating really hard. She'll have new abilities after her body processes the energy. She said, if you can't handle the energy, it's better to just move up and out of the body. Move on and come back later if you want. Not everyone will be there in fifth. There's not everyone on earth. They departed during the wave. They don't die. They go elsewhere. They go to ships. The deciding factor is the choice of handling it or not. So whether or not that individual feels that they can handle this energy, the ships will be in the upper atmosphere ready for them, regardless. Some individuals will go on these ships to other planets similar to Earth to continue their experience of the 3D game. That's just a small excerpt from the Law's Canon, the three ways of volunteers and the new map. So she said, beings start to come down after the light flash to teach. Not to rule in any way, but to help us clean up the oceans among many other things. Everything is just so pretty, pretty and sparkly in the new earth. She says to tell people about the wave so they don't get scared in advance, that they may not believe you. <laughs> There will be a lot of people that won't believe this until they see it. I know that. She will be home again. She'll, she'll see brightness. She'll feel the wave as love and energy. The bright light will last for only a minute moment for some and a long time for others, but it is life-changing for all though. 
if people are in, are in precarious positions, such as a, a telephone pole, uh, they will be put in a form of suspended animation. Everyone will be cared for, and everyone will change. Some will choose to stay for a while, but some will go or ascend as soon as they want to. Many will remain, and many will go. The, more, the majority, she said, will go within three to five years. Once they ascend, they can go anywhere and nowhere, everywhere at once. Good old higher self, putting it, <laughs> putting it straight. If you want to be here and you want to be on earth, you look down. But if you want to go somewhere else, you look up and you go. So now we're moving, we're moving on to Alison Coe's second client. And this is a moment for this client at the event. So she came to a moment when she and her husband were on a camping trip near a beach in Oregon. She said there was a rainbow cloud and that was the catalyst. They were at the beach when it happened. They see it coming over the ocean from where they were in Oregon. She knew the energy was coming at some point and she felt it before she actually saw it. She sees it very slowly approaching from the south, like a rolling iridescent fog coming in. She wanted to like breathe it in. As you breathe it in, it is healing and revitalizing, she said. Her body soaked up the energy because she didn't resist it at all. She and her husband are sitting holding hands and are so happy that it's finally here and sense that it will change everything. To her, it felt like peace, love, knowing, connection alive and bright. These were her words. There are other people on the campground who are confused and frightened and she gets a feeling that she needs to walk amongst them and tell them everything's going to be okay. Because she is acting like everything is okay, they then start taking cue from her. She and her husband get back from back to Portland from their camping holiday where there was a lot of confusion among everybody. The kids were absolutely fine though, but some of the parents needed some help. This lady's son is a doctor at this moment who is very good in his field, but really couldn't align himself to see his mum's perspectives. So that was a bit of a gap between them, between them both. However, after the event, he starts to look at her differently. He starts to think that perhaps maybe just maybe she's not as crazy as he once thought she was. <laughs> and so this same client now, um, Alison Co. then progresses her forward six months after the event. So <laughs> her husband, who is speaking through, who is relaying information in that moment to this client through the session then, says that it feels somehow less crowded, far less crowded. There are no strangers anymore. Everyone has this beingness about themselves, each other, the trees, the animals, and everything in general. It changes everything when you look out externally with that in your heart. Governments are a little more willing to listen after the event. We can't do factory farming anymore. <laughs> the water has to be good. And there's a lot of cleanup to do. On a personal level, she felt like she just wanted to go dancing around and hugging, hugging everyone. But perhaps because she breathed in that initial iridescent wave, that she let it through in a state of surrender. She didn't have any real trouble with it. Perhaps maybe she was also really well prepared as well for it. She said she felt more crystalline, much physically lighter. It was as if the process had started to change her physically from a solid state to a more transmutational, iridescent type of crystalline. She says, this is what love is. She says, she, she said she is a first responder and she hit the ground running. She's going around helping people by being present, soothing and touching them, if they're happy with that, of course. All the while she is ecstatic, trying to contain her energy while going around helping people. Her higher self was brought into the session at this time now. So, and the higher self, her higher self said the reason why she was shown this lifetime, she said, was because 
she didn't know if she would be there on the new earth. She didn't have any feeling of it. <laughs> now she's going to have a hard time waiting for it. She can stop worrying about which way the earth is going, which direction she's going in personally. So at the moment, in 2018, she is an elder. It's this time, this moment now that I've been describing six months into the event, she is she is still an elder, but she's she acts as a bridge between the wisdom of the elders uh, with the playfulness of a child. So it's a very kind of heightened, well, it's that kind of state of being. It's that kind of like monk that can just sit on a hill for a very long time and have the wisdom of have the wisdom of the ages within them but also that kind of childish childlike spark and so now this same client Alison then um, progressed this client forwards in the same life but a bit later on so she drops down and the sky is blue and beautiful and there's like a really nice waterfall with rocks and moss everywhere and lots of really big trees like huge giant oak trees the air feels light and fresh like she's in a tropical paradise not palm tree tropical but just tropical she has sandals on but she feels like her feet go bare feet a lot everything is light and breezy and shimmery she looked at her skin and she noticed that all of her freckles are gone and she has a beautiful tan as if she's used to being outside a lot. She feels like it's her in her current life, but a number of years later on. <laughs> she has a big, thick, shimmery, white, pearlescent braid. She's wearing beautiful stones. She feels crystalline within herself, and everything feels crystalline and iridescent. So she's still her, but she's stronger. It's a version of her that she's always wanted to be that she's always hoped to look like and strived for. Again, she's an elder in this life and she's still an elder at that moment, but she's not like old. She can do anything she wants to do. She can jump, she can land. She can almost fly if she wanted to. She said that she said the leaps are so fun as if she's defying gravity, as though gravity is different. It doesn't feel so thick and heavy. The place she's in is inhabited with a community, but it's not densely populated. Things are a bit spread out more. She lives up in a tree house, kind of like Swiss Family Robinson, and the area is kind of like a playland, like a big expansive communal play area. Most people live in the trees. Not everybody, as there are other types of houses, but most people do live up in the trees and there's like bridge boardwalks between the trees. <laughs> she lives there with her husband and he's reading under candlelight at this moment. He looks a little younger, but still has his salt and pepper gray hair and is much more buff and stronger. She said he would be very happy to see this. <laughs> they spend their time making things such as pots and there are crystals all around in the house. There are no cars around, so her husband will be sad about that as he's a bit of a car buff, she said. The crystals they have are used instead of telephones. It's like a network done respectfully in the form of requesting the other person's presence and asking to connect. These crystals can be used to connect with potentially anyone and, well, potentially anyone. You don't hold the crystal. You just put your hand on a facet of the crystal for it to work. People spend a lot of their time tending, playing and creating with colour and things like that. They can love something into being. Not a romantic love, but more manifestational within how they lay out their homes, for example, and what they choose to have within them. There's no work type of feeling, she said. Just more tend, play and work with the plants to grow food. Their family feels close by, they're not in the immediate environment, but they are close by. She definitely feels she is on the new earth. But she, and, she and her family walked across the bridge to get to this new version of her. The, bri the bridge was available and pretty much everyone was going, so they decided to go too. So that brings an end to, the, to those quantum healing 
hypnotherapy sessions and I'm moving on to a section still within 2012 to 2024 but this section is going to be information primarily from Adronus of Sirius channeled by Brad Johnson. So from now 2018 to 2024 all of the corruption within our governments, corporations and societal structures will be completely exposed to the collective of humanity. The government, as we know it now, will cease to exist. All of our old systems will be completely dissolved with new systems, governance, educational and political form put in place. These new governments will exist to serve the people and no longer the other way around like it has been for a very long time. Any government seen to be not serving the people will be exposed and removed. This is very much like what Iceland has created with their now people-powered government. This is the direction the collective is heading towards. This idea of, for in Iceland, for example, where look at it, a poll would be put out across the internet for each individual within Iceland to vote on, to have their say towards how that particular thing should be done. That's what we're going towards. The span of time will, this span of time, now until 2024, will represent one of the most heated moments in the history of Earth. There's so much going on. Although it may seem in our media that there's like complete carnage and like 90% of the world is going to crap <laughs> and only 10% is actually doing okay and is positively moving forwards, it's actually the opposite. So actually 90% of what's going on in the world is positive and positively moving forward in a, in a, in a light and good hearted direction. Whereas that there is of course that 10% which is wars and issues and harshness in the world still. Polarity. The cabal or however you wish to term them we're not expecting to be exposed in the way that they are and have been. And as such, their system is crumbling beyond repair and they are frantic. Many countries will start to unify together for a common alliance. There will be no empires on this planet ever again, because we will see how powerful we are as a collective unit. Through this common alliance, much more grassroots developments will slowly start to take place in regards to transportation, free energy technology, educational systems, and the dissolving of fiat currency that were previously being suppressed by the old world management team, the Cabal, the Illuminati, hell I don't even say it on here, video might get taken down there, watch out. <laughs> Not even joking actually. Um, in order for us to change, we must work on ourselves at an individual internal level, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. The more of us that work on ourselves in these ways, the more the collective consciousness will continue to lighten and evolve itself. Practicing self-love to oneself in all ways is paramount at this time. Working through and feeling into traumatic triggers that are coming up in our day-to-day -day lives, we must harmonise with them and then transmute them in order to make our emotional bodies lighter and rebalanced and in fact even biased towards positive emotion. But getting a bit complicated. Right. So now we're moving on to the section 2025 to 2035 AD. So we will continue to pull out more of the old roots of the old system. These roots are like a metaphor for one of the things that have been kind of kept from our awareness as a society or societies. These things have been deeply buried um, and embedded into our economies, into our cultures, into our ways of thinking, our programming that has happened via the media. A lot of this is going to be coming out to the surface when it's exposed and 
it's going to shock a lot of people and it's just going to have to all completely change. Housing and shelter will start to change as well. Some will have started to leave the cities to form communities and more will continue to do so. On the lead up to and around 2030, there may be somewhat of a stampede. Food cultivation will start to change. There will be a lot more farms, like local farms, and we'll start to feed each other more. There will be various organisations working together to create more wilderness, to green the deserts and transform other somewhat harsher environments into more habitable states. Through new advancements and being able to nullify radiation, areas such as Fukushima and Chernobyl will be made rehabitable. This kind of technology will use magnetic fields and frequency acoustic vibrations and will also allow us to clean up our air, our air and water supplies. So still within the 2025 to 2035 span, the pharmaceutical industries will start to slowly be on their way out as vastly superior healing technologies will become available, given to us most likely. Certain holographic regeneration technologies will be released that have been kept under lock and key for a long time. This technology will not use stem cells. It will use photonic energy to map and re-coordinate with the genome to reproduce new limbs and organs within minutes. Countries such as Germany, India and Russia already have these new forms of medical technology. They are also working on revamping teleporters, portals, zero point free energy, Tesla coil free energy, and acoustic levitation technologies for humanity to enjoy. <sighs> Amazing. <laughs> cool. Anyway, I've got to stay unbiased because I'm the messenger. So. Free energy and acoustic anti-gravitation levitation technologies will be released to companies, most likely car manufacturers, for example, and public scientists to reverse engineer. Space exploration on the public level will begin before 2030, introducing us to the concept of becoming a galactic collective and marking it somewhat as a benchmark period. Yeah, we're cool. We're galactic. <laughs> Extraterrestrial disclosure will have significant talks around it. The collective will be slowly drip-fed, in a way. A series of unveilings, first about off-planet plant life, then to creatures that exist, that eventually lead to the disclosure of other sentient life in our solar system upon Earth as well, and even the rest of the cosmos. By this time, however, when disclosure actually happens, uh, the vast majority of people will already be very aware within themselves that other civilizations exist beyond their own world. Monetary systems will change and will no longer be fiat in the times ahead, as it will move towards gold-backed tender and cryptocurrencies. In summer to autumn of 2016, the BRICS alliance countries started the process of moving into reserve currencies contained within vaults, moving towards one currency, one global currency. It started to happen through China. They're kind of like the, uh, the forerunners, as it were, in this way. Russia will be next, followed by Ukraine. Up until 2020, there will be an ever-increasing resource pool because of this. The US will hold out to the end to preserve the dollar, and the UK is somewhat the same due to the monarchy. It won't affect most as it will be kept under wraps. A smooth transition, as observed from the outside, of course, but behind the scenes, like instigating all of this stuff and setting it all up, can be chaotic. This process is being instigated through a group of Chinese elders. 
who have long had the best interests of humanity at heart. There is much momentum towards the idea of universal basic income. All debt will be erased. All debt will be erased on an individual and collective level. <laughs> that means credit cards and loans, etc. Now, I don't know if that means like a mortgage on a home. I, I don't know any details in particular in regards to that as not too much detail has been shared about the financial reset in this way and what will happen after the event as it is really supposed to be a surprise for humanity. Many people's higher selves will not allow them to become aware of certain details about this. Many people's higher selves will not even let their lower selves get near to this video, this article that you're reading or watching now. The Dark Ones, the Deep State, Cabal, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, again, wish to sabotage this whole process of a financial reset from happening, but they will not succeed. Everything is going according to plan. The blockchain technology used with cryptocurrency will be used for the new global currency. But they have, but I did come across the idea that this may only be for a short period before something else takes its place. We will be moving into a lifestyle which does not require money. Instead, things will be brought together through cooperation and instant manifestation. Sounds like an amazing place. I'm staying unbiased here, but <laughs> sounds amazing. Anyway, a distinction between the third and fourth density crowds will begin to become clearer. The third density crowd will begin moving towards artificial technology, into AI and virtual reality to create digitized, digitized versions of the astral realm. Many will want to have their bodies put in stasis, exploring this idea of cybernetic transhumanism. The fourth density crowd will be moving more towards states of naturalness and the technology of consciousness wanting to start eco-villages and become more indigenous, connected to nature. There will be many forms of choices and divisions within society around this time, 20, 25 to 2030, which means that this will lead more to the aspect of a physical split that's happening upon our planet between the two different paths, the old earth and the new earth. Those who are open and agents of change, and those who do not want to change at all, will see a large segregation that will happen at this time. Those who have lost, those who have their nine to five jobs, who feel that they have no control over their own life, that they feel completely victimized by their own emotions and mentality, will form one earth. Some will call this the old earth. Those who are open, who are expanding, who are enriching and developing themselves, who see that humanity as a collective will be part of a fifth dimensional slash fourth density earth. Some will call this the new earth. Many 5D abilities such as telepathy and astral projection will start to become more available to us. Exciting stuff. There will be a massive surge of spiritual upbringing where many people will start to feel like they are blossoming and changing within themselves to a large degree. Humanity will start to become more humanitarian. <laughs> people will come together through fellowship and will be helping and serving one another. Tesla coil and zero point free energy technologies are already being implemented and set up as a worldwide backup system in the event of extreme solar storms. This has been happening in secrecy through executive orders distributed among world governments. The building of both Tesla coil and zero point energy plants throughout the world will draw power from the Earth's torsion fields or the electromagnetic grid. 
These virtually untapped energy sources will be available worldwide for free once fully established. Exciting times ahead. So now moving on to the next section, 2036 to 2060 AD. Clean energy and clean travel will be in full swing at this time. People come together to form strong communities and people powered organizations. Not through the idea of disaster, but through naturalness. This will naturally be what people will start to do is create people powered organizations. Governments that the people will allow to exist will align to serve people and not the other way around. All of this will change first, but before ET contact on a global level will come. Also, there will be pockets of ET contact at the event with growing pockets from then until mass open contact, which will happen before 2060. People will start to see themselves as unified citizens of Earth, not citizens of a particular country or entity. Over the next two to three generations, we will become aware of our connection to all things. We will begin to understand more of our immortality. And as such, people will naturally start having fewer children. Earth at the moment is capable of sustaining approximately 9 billion people upon her surface. 9 billion. At the moment, we're about 7 billion. When the population reaches 9 to 9.5 billion, there will be new innovations, events, and situations taking place to transform the plane that we are a part of to accommodate this amount of incarnate fourth, fourth dimensional and third density humans. Through new technologies, there may be the idea of celestial orbital cities, floating sky cities, as well as underwater and above water cities to help accommodate such a populace. The Argarfans, the inner earth people, may come out onto the surface around 2055 to 2060 AD, along with the Sasquatch, the Mantis beings, orbs, nature spirits, and even the Fae will start to come out to say hi. Now moving on to the next section, 2061 to 2100 AD. We become entirely immersed into a fourth density planet towards the very end of the 21st century. At the very end of the 21st century, weather modification technology will become available to us. So people will not have to go through intense floods and droughts anymore. During the 21st century, world peace will finally become a reality. Peace lasts for 300 years. The Earth will undergo geographical changes. Scientific progress will be very evident. Hunger, greed, jealousy, prejudice, and other negative aspects of society seem to have been almost entirely eliminated by the end of the 21st century. Now moving on to the next section, 2100 to 2200 AD. So that's 100 years. Free energy and solar power will be incorporated into everyday life in the 22nd century. We will fully understand that there is no such thing as death. The lifespan of the average adult will be increased to over 90 years. Many types of diseases are finally cured. All right, so we're now at the year 2147 AD. Earth is fully graduated to a fourth density planet a fourth density society. At this time as well, the moon will leave its position as our satellite. This is because the social experiment that was being conducted by the beings upon the moon, as well as those who created the moon, was a success. So this aspect of the experiment will be no longer needed on Earth. A unanimous vote was made and the moon was told to leave. So all involved in the creation of the moon go to a different planet to continue their experiments, including the moon. The technology upon the planet at this time coming is capable, will be capable enough to recreate all of the functions of the moon. So the moon was no longer needed at all. Now moving on to the year 2160 AD. 
Sol, our sun, enters the age of Aquarius. This is this is it from zero point to uh, zero AD to twenty one sixty AD. Some Aquarian age archetypes are that of unity, community, equality, and brotherhood. Between the twenty second, twenty third, and twenty fourth centuries, approximately a type of Syrian technology will be given to us. We will reverse engineer it and it will power the entire planet. This is the same kind of technology the Syrians once gave to the Atlanteans. It will use a combination of crystal and pyramid technology that taps into the Earth's crystalline electromagnetic grid. Now moving on to the span 2200 to 2300 AD. Celestial travel to different solar systems will become a new experience for many at this time. The Earth herself will become an intergalactic exchange centre for beings from all across the galaxy. New buildings and structures that come about will start to be constructed more so in alignment to nature, incorporating organic foundations. There will be a huge reduction in using artificial materials to create structures. Religion will hold out until the last person who still holds value to any particular one of the organized faiths. The major religions will hold out saying that we are the only way and will try to coerce their followers, but many people will see through that. The extremes that have come through religion will slowly start to decrease over time. People will eventually realize that their sanctity and wholeness comes from within themselves. So they are no longer looking externally for salvation, I suppose. The complete dissolving of all religions altogether will come about around the 23rd century. Now the following information was received via progression hypnotherapy sessions between the 70s and 90s. So the 23rd century, will be characterized by noiseless and efficient transportation. Nuclear power is used extensively and is safe and clean. Experiments in weather control are a top priority. The average lifespan is now over 110 years. Politically, the earth is democratic with two major groups. One is called the Western Federation of Nations and is composed of North America, including the US, South America, Europe, Africa and the Middle East. The Eastern Alliance is the other group and is made up of Russia, China, India, Japan, Southeast Asia, New Zealand and Australia. Now, again, that information that just came through um, could be, might not be relevant anymore. Things might have changed a lot because I've had information that we're going to be moving towards the ideas of councils as will be discussed. So this could be, this aspect of Eastern and Western alliances could indeed still have momentum, but that could be perhaps an old world, uh, third dimen well, third density uh, kind of timeline. Whereas the idea of the councils, or the Council of Twelve for Earth, could be more of a new Earth, fifth dimensional, fourth density timeline, running in parallel. So. Now moving on to still within the years of 2200 AD to 2300 AD, we're now coming to a small little story from the book Past Lives, Future Lives Were Revealed by Dr. Bruce Goldberg. This particular client that we're about to hear a story from, um, Dr. Goldberg progressed this client into the future to the year 2271 AD and the client's name in that lifetime is Amag Dalla. So here it goes. There are white lacy curtains in front of a window. Within the room, there are silver plates lined up on the wall. They had emblems on them, but no writing. Near the wall was a couch and chairs, which had a cubicle kind of design. This was his home, and that day was the day of rest. He would normally be working as a craftsperson, creating silver plates. He makes them for people as a service, and there are very few others who do this kind of work as a craftsman. 
The plates are made of silver. They are a means of currency. People go to him for his work so that they can have plates made for them too, as it incre increases the value of the metal. Some of these clients work in law, manufacturing and transportation. The kind of transportation involving molecular reassembly, a form of teleportation, which is fairly new at this time. Other uses for molecular reassembly include sustenance, where people have small units to help nourish them while they sleep. The unit is like a platform, a round platform, and there is a coordinate tracking system to set it. The last time Amygdala used the molecular reassembly unit was for transporting himself into the city for a meeting. Again, that's information that has come through a, part, a future life progression hypnotherapy session about 30 to 40 years ago. So now moving on to the span 2300 to 2480. So Earth is now seen as being preserved and the surface starts being given back to let nature just do its thing. By doing this, it improves the crystalline grid and allows Earth to sculpt herself more. More as in her, te her tectonic plates, she can move around freely without worrying about having to worry about um, killing millions of human beings on her surface. More habitable plateaus, such as crystalline space cities within the atmosphere, along with orbital cities, will be in use around this time. There is almost no cutting down of trees and the sabotaging of nature's roots. None of that. If people wish to have a dwelling upon the surface, they can use holographic technology to create, say, a log cabin in the middle of the woods, for example, which can then be turned on and off. The holographic wood, rubber, and even plastics, for example, will still feel just like the same thing. Now, the following timeline information for this span was received again via progression hypnotherapy sessions between 1970s and 1990s from Dr. Goldberg. So here we go. Absolutely no nuclear wars will take place until the 24th century, when there will be a small cold fusion war. Now again, I know I'm kind of, I am judging this information. It's not something that I would like to see happen, but it's there. It's what I'm relaying now because I've, who knows, it could happen. Further geographical changes take place on the Earth's surface, and the League of One is the democratic, democratic form of government for the entire planet, replacing the Western Federation and the Eastern Alliance. Cold fusion and other free energy sources are now in use. Now moving into the span 2500 to 2600 AD. Again, the following timeline information was received from Dr. Bruce Goldberg between the 70s and 90s. He says there will be underwater cities. Genetic engineering and interplan interplanetary travel will dominate the 26th century. We will have regular contact with extraterrestrials. Information pills will keep citizens well informed. The lifespan is increased to over 125 years. Sickness and disease are almost unknown. Now moving on to the next span, 2600 to 2700 AD. We will have our own council upon Earth, a council of 12. They will have no authority. They are more caretakers, focused on natural fairness and equality. Each of the 12 oversees a certain aspect of the collective. This new Earth Council will be in communication to the Galactic Council, as we will be recognised as a fully established member of the Galactic Community, as far as our collective is concerned. The Council is likely to be all women, and will be elders instead of younger. This council will branch down into sub-councils beneath it. Again, there's no kind of like authority as such. It's more just they are overseeing, guiding, trying to keep a grasp of the bigger picture in that way. Now moving on to the next section, the years 2700 to 2800 AD. Again, the following information has come from Dr. Goldberg between the 70s and 90s. So throughout this span, 
well, or throughout the span of 2700 to 3000 AD, we really start to branch out from Earth as a galactic civilization. We start inhabiting other planets and their moons in our solar system and beyond. During the 28th century, the League of One is replaced by the Atlantic and Pacific Federations. These groups are also democratic and are composed of the same nations that were a part of the old Western Federation and Eastern Alliance. There are no wars and people live to be about 150 at this time. Now moving on to the next section, the year 3000 AD to the year 3100 AD. Again, the following information was received by Dr. Bruce Goldberg between the 70s and 90s. So this paradigm of peace and really nice timelines kind of on the lead up from 2600 AD to this moment of the 31st century, uh, this paradigm remains relatively stable through the beginning of the 31st century when we finally master time travel. At this time, time travelers from our future begin to go back in time to not only the 20th century, but all the way back to millions of years into prehistory to supervise both our evolution and spiritual growth. These time travelers, chrononauts, as Dr. Bruce Goldberg calls them, function as our guardian angels by placing attackers in suspended animation states to, to allow our escape. They can manipulate our physical laws to assist us in times of need. These chrononauts follow us from lifetime to lifetime. They trace our soul back to our previous lives and monitor our spiritual unfoldment. The origin of these chrononauts is Earth from 1,000 to 3,000 years in the future. The past 500 years has seen a significant increase in the quality of their monitoring and abductions. That is the past 500 years from this point now in 2018. A state of suspended animation can be adduced instantly on anyone they choose. They have mastered hyperspace travel between dimensions and can move through walls and solid objects. By existing in the fifth dimension, they can observe us and remain invisible. They can levitate themselves or us at will. Genetic manipulation of our, of our chromosomes is a routine procedure for them. They have greatly sped up our rate of evolution. The less advanced groups make many errors with experiments but the more advanced ones manipulate time and space with proficiency. The ultimate purpose of these time travelers is to facilitate the perfection of the human soul to allow for ascension and the end of the karmic cycle. As we grow spiritually now, so do they. They are us in the future. There are many different beings from many different collectives who are assisting us here and now, but come from our future if viewed in a 3D linear way. Some examples are Adronus of Sirius, who I've mentioned in this video, who is a future aspect of Brad Johnson's own consciousness, I believe 248 years in the future from now, at this moment. There are also the likes of the Ansha and the Blue Avians, who Corey Good has stated are us ourselves but from millions of years in our future, respectively. These beings, us, are here now to help create the most optimal temporal reality for Earth and ultimately everyone's timelines. Now we have another story from Dr. Bruce Goldberg's book, Past Lives, Future Lives Revealed. Again, this book was written, published in 1982, I believe, so I'm back then again some timelines were there were certain timelines that existed that were quite different to what timelines exist now in terms of potential and momentum time travel will be discovered in approximately the year 3050 AD by a, by a man named Tatos he is the Hermes of ancient Egypt and the very first chrononaut time traveller to use some form of hyperspace engineering. Tatos was a brilliant scientist, artist, writer, and archeologist, and had many other talents. Prior to his actually traveling back in time, 
he sent holographic images into the past. This is why the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, and so on, described visions by their oracles, soothsayers, and psychics. Objects were then transported back in time after the technology was perfected. Finally, humans made trips to centuries past by way of saucer-spaced crafts through the black hole, wormhole, white hole paradigm, which is an aspect of their hyperspace time travel technology. Tatos was the first human time traveler. Following his success, four other chrononauts were selected to function as a team on his craft. Their names were Jeb, Isis, Osiris, and Horus. You may recognize these names from Egyptian theology. When Jeb, Isis, Osiris, and Horus had completed their missions in ancient Egypt, they then either ascended or continued to help influence other timelines at different moments throughout our history. Now moving on to the span 3200 to 3300. Here we have information from Codename Randall, who is uh, an intelligence specialist from the 33rd century who interviews a lot of people. This information coming that is about to come through um, originates from Randall, but has been channeled through Brad Johnson, who also tra channels Sirius. <laughs> yeah, he channels Sirius, yeah. <laughs> he channels Adronus of Sirius. <sighs> so Randall, he communicates with other beings across different dimensions to find out more about how intelligence furthers itself. He exists in the actual astral body state approximately five miles underground Fort Lauderdale, Florida. There is a small deviation of approximately two to three percent difference between our own timeline here at this moment and his timeline. So he had a President Trump. He had, yeah, very similar timeline and a very slight deviation. And he says, he starts by saying, oh, well, we're in, we are in for such an incredible journey. That right now, around this time of 2018, is the most prestigious of times, for it is when humanity takes its power back, this, this time now. <laughs> he says that in his time, there is a little less landmass around the, the area of Northern California that around 2 to 3% of it is underwater, and that it took quite a long time for that to happen. Certain forms of islands aren't in the area of the Pacific Northwest, around the areas of Oregon and Seattle, Washington. Some islands are no longer there due to a 29 degree axis shift, which has affected the curvature of the Earth. This will happen slowly, and many will know the appropriate times to relocate themselves, so very few people are harmed, or were harmed on his timeline. There will of course also be many other geographical land changes, not just related to the Pacific Northwest of the United States and Western Canada. There'll be lots of changes all across the globe. Randall estimates there are approximately 2 billion humans and human hybrids upon the planet at this time of the 33rd century. There is much more movement, not towards population control, but to population management. The average at that moment is one child per parent. There's no form of education whatsoever, he said. The education is more so through the individual. A child decides what they want to do with their life, usually around the age of three. They have created a science as it relates to manifestation, and they call it coherency which is very similar to the idea of the law of, law of attraction. But the idea of the law of coherency is that it, there's also the idea of repulsion as well as attraction. So whereas the law of attraction is just focused on attracting, the law of coherency also involves what you, what you want to be pushing away. So anyway, so the three-year-old children know what they want to start exploring. 
And so go forth and manifest certain situations with others that they want to learn from. The use of the law of coherency on another level allows them to teleport using their own consciousness by setting an intention of vividly feeling into the place that they want to go to. And then they feel into that place and then all of a sudden they're kind of like, they're there. <laughs> it just happens, they just... Fifth dimensional, fifth dimensional kind of, uh, kind of ten. So, at that moment in the thirty-first century, there is approximately a thirty-five to forty-five percent reduction in the number of predatory animals upon the surface than there are now. This is because any such animal that feels that it has reached a state of accomplishment, such as a carnivorous animal, will go extinct naturally through nature. However, of course, it all sounds doom and gloom, the poor lions and tigers and all of the meat eaters, as it were. The crystalline DNA archetypes for those animals will always exist. They won't be gone forever. They will always still exist. At this time, in the 33rd century, there's no more war. And the only challenge is how you can better yourself and how you can better contribute to the collective whole. There are no secrets amongst anyone anymore, which is part of the condition of becoming a fifth dimensional, fourth density civilization. They sleep for between two to four hours per day. They do not eat as much as we do in the 21st century. This is due to an approximately 26 to 27% oxygen content increase throughout the planet. This is due to the oxygen circulation between the North and South Poles, which is done by processes in the Atlantic Ocean that convert H2O into oxygen, water into oxygen, and then the remaining sea salt is used to cleanse the air. So eating a single bean would lead to feeling stuffed. Now moving on to the next span, 3400 to 3500 AD. Here we have another story from past lives, future lives revealed by Dr. Bruce Goldberg. Again, this information has come through in pre-1982, so again, use your own discernment. Here we have the story of John, who is one of Dr. Goldberg's clients. John was progressed into a future life when he, when he is called Kamar in the year 3478 AD. Kamar is a 26-year-old living in Nubia, and he's at the training center being educated on how to be a time traveler. Muvia is actually the ancient continent of Lemuria, or Mu, located in the Pacific Ocean that sunk approximately 11,000 BC, but surfaced sometime during the 28th century. By the year 3050, when time travel was invented, Muvia became the seat of time travel research, and Tathaus work on discovering how to send first images then objects and finally humans back through time, as stated. At this time, there are around 1 billion people on the planet. This is truly a golden age. More advances will be made technologically and spiritually in this century of the 35th century than in any other century throughout Earth's history. The average age is between 500 and 900 years old due to an energy charging device called the Alpha Syncolarium that stimulates our adrenal glands and gonads to increase its production of the hormone DHEA. DHEA is a sex hormone that functions as a major component of our immune system. Now moving on to the next span, 3500 to 3600 AD. And here we have another story from the book Past Lives, Future Lives Revealed by Dr. Goldberg. The first time traveller Dr. Goldberg met in hyperspace, or the fifth dimension, was a pure human calling himself Traxa. He lives in the 36th century on Earth, when time travel is manifested by way of teleportation. This means that Traxa can beam his physical body back to our century, well, physical, back to our century without requiring a spacecraft. This is because this previous type of technology they were using with the black hole, wormhole, white hole, 
when sending crafts through it was creating rips in the space-time fabric. So now through this idea of teleportation, they're now able to teleport their bodies using a chip, but without creating any kind of rips in the time-space fabric. The mechanism of time travel by teleportation is apparently rather complex. What Dr. Goldberg discovered from Trexa and other teleporters is that they use a type of fifth dimensional computer chip to determine precisely where to travel back or forward to in time. They carry a small camera-like device that connects them to a rather advanced master computer. So there we go. Now into the final section, the conclusion. So there we have it. Um, <laughs> there was quite a lot of information there from a variety of different perspectives. And <laughs> some of it, to me, seemed quite contradicting at times. But overall, I can have this kind of strong feeling that there really isn't anything to fear anymore about the future. Fear now really is an experience that you can create for yourself if that's something that you want to experience. But the information that has been shared here today, from my perspective, feels good to me. It feels right. I mean, it may not necessarily all come to pass. None of it might happen in the way that it has been said. But I just hope that <laughs> this kind of information can take someone who feels like the world is going to end, that World, for, world War Three is going to happen, and a load of people are going to die. No, it's not going to happen. I hope that that person now realises that the future is bright. And it's what you make of it, of course. If you want to be on that kind of timeline, fifth dimensional, fourth density timeline, it's really down to you. I really hope you've enjoyed this information. If you do have any kind of questions about where I sourced any particular piece of information from, feel free to just message me. There will be uh, ways to contact me within this article or video in the description, if it is the video. Anything on the whole that really interests you about what's been shared here, feel free to, to uh, check out the following references, which is where I have gathered a lot of this information from throughout my own journey over the past, <laughs> well, six seven years. So thank you very much for watching. It's been a blessing to be able to share this information with you. Thank you. <laughs>